All right, let's get started. Transition over. And what we have up on the screen is the photo jobs tab within the Got Photo configuration admin page. You'll hear if you talk to our customer success team, uh, they may call it config, they may call it the the admin site. This this is the guts of everything where you'll be working. What you'll see up on my screen is the photo jobs tab, as I mentioned, right there, and we've got all these different jobs. This is a high level overview of all the jobs you have set up, what state they're in. See, I've got a couple in planning, I've got a couple set to selling, none in archive at the time. See the type of job I've set, how many photos are loaded, shoot date, some other information, relevant information, so at a high level you understand what status your jobs or galleries are in. This is also where you'll create your first job. I've got my photo Volume Photo Academy demonstration job already set up. I needed to print some QR cards, which we'll touch on shortly. So that's going to be my swap in a little bit. But I do want to show you that first step because as we talked, we're going to go from job setup all the way to setting, selling, setting and selling, setting to selling, and what your parents see. All right, so I'm going to click create new job here. Need some simple information. What's my job name? It's going to be Photo Academy Test, right? It could be ABC High School, you know, Northwest Elementary, whatever your job needs to be named. It's going to be shown to the customers, so it needs to, um, you know, make sure you sp spell things right. Uh, the shoot date, we'll say the shoot date's today. Correct. And then the last thing you need to do is set the type. Jump into school, we'll say this is an elementary school. And we'll hit save job. Oh wait, no, nope, middle school. I know what my data looks like. I got seventh and eighth graders. Middle school. Click save job. You don't need to worry about advanced settings on most things that you do. All right. Then you are dropped within the job itself. All right. This, if I click on photo academy test, which I just created, I went back to the photo jobs tab. I click photo academy test, and this is what you're presented with. This is all, Everything you need here on this page and the sub tabs running across here, QR cards, photo management, photo editing, selling and statistics, everything to run the job is located here. All right. Everything is presented linear in a linear fashion for a job. As you'll see here, right? You choose your access method. This is where like, hey, I'm using QR tags. I've got a names list and I'll cover that shortly. And then it flows into setting the price profile, right? What does my price pr price sheet look like? What am I charging for the packages, prints, products, um, downloads? Then the important events. You'll see job created, picture day. If you're using a discount or coupon, this is where you can set it up. And what's really nice about the coupon here, it's already, if you use the coupon at the job level, it's already pre-applied when your parent or client goes into the job. It makes it that much um, a more a more positive experience for, for that customer where they're like, oh crap, I, they check out and they forget the code. That creates a customer, uh, customer support you know, ticket for you here. It's already applied. They'll see it already applied in their cart. And as I'll show you when I show the shopping cart, you can drive deadlines call to actions from, from this coupon where it's like, hey, it's counting down. This deadline expires. You can trigger emails based on that deadline. Really exciting stuff. But for my job, for, for this job here, you'll see there's coupon code already applied with a 25% discount. And you can, you can get very complicated, right? Add tiers, right? Do a lot of things based on either value or percent. There's a batch shipping area. If you wanted to, if you needed to bundle the job, send it all of it back together to you, or send it directly to the school or organization. You can definitely do batch shipping. As trends have moved in the industry, a lot of um, ordering done on our platform is direct shipping. Right, the parent checks out, pays the nominal shipping fee. Lab 
gets the order, ships it directly to them. That cleans up the, that, that whole process, saves you steps, saves the school steps. Everybody's happy. Parent gets their order quicker. Last section under the important events is the archiving. This is another great area to trigger call to actions from. You can set a deadline date and send emails and SMS based on that as that deadline approaches to drive urgency. And then you can choose when it archives. Right, you get some great options here. You can have it archived that same day. Or, as we all know, you've got those procrastinator parents. You can set it a day or two later so that they show up. Oh, crap. It's past the archiving date. They log in. They still get in. They get their order in. Or you can also do do not archive the job automatically. Drive all those call to actions, but leave it open. You've got flexibility here. Last section on this page, communication profile. A really powerful tool here within Gutphoto. Fully customizable email and SMS um, profile. It can be as many emails as you need, triggered from a bunch of different events, as I just talked about. Best thing is, it's a set it and forget it, which makes your marketing of that photo job quite easy. You can sit back, get that dopamine hit every time you get an email that an order comes in where you didn't have to do any work. But let's start back at the top. Right, The most important thing you need to decide when you're first setting up a job prior to the shoot is what type of access you need. Is it an access code for each person, meaning each student or subject needs their own, um, needs their own code? Is it a single access code job where you want to have it a private gallery, but there's only ever needing that one code? This is more geared towards portrait work. You know, if you're a photographer who does both volume and portrait, Got Photo could be a great option for you because you can manage both here. You can, if you've got a, a wedding or a family studio shoot, set this job up to be that single access code, have it still secure, share that code with them. And the last one you see over here, not used that often, but you can set it up as a public gallery. Um, great for uh, you know, public events, you know, parades, things of that nature. And you can have it published directly to your login page where someone can see it, access it, and go right in, place orders. For the sake of this demonstration and with us talking volume photography, we're going to do access code for each person. And you'll see here, right below that, choose a method. You've got several here. QR tagging, QR tagging with names list, QR tagging with registration for picture day, and manual tagging. The one that is most powerful and relevant to just about everything you do in with volume photography is QR tagging with list of names. This is where prior to the shoot, you reach out to the school, the league, and you get all the data ahead of time. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with doing that. So you've got your CSV, your XLS, right, different columns, first name, last name, teacher, grade, parent email address, parent phone number, uh, student ID number, right? Those are the big ones. This is where you import it in and get that data, you know, formatted in so that you can generate the QR cards ready for photography. Also on the right here, if you need a, a, a solid template, we have, we provide those. So you can always send that template over to a school that may not be, you know, we've got a, a preschool um, that's less familiar uh, with supplying data, you can send a template over and say, hey, it needs to look like this. Can you, can you format it? Or you can copy over to our template. If you use our template, it will ingest right in. You don't even have to assign the columns. I'll go ahead and upload my test data. Right here. I've got my spreadsheet. I'll click open. All right. First thing you'll see here is to confirm the columns. I left some purposely um, set up not to match so that it wouldn't go straight to the next step. You'll see here it's pre-identifying the first name, last name, teacher, group, identifier. You'll see group is grade. Those are synonymous in our system. Uh, identifier is student ID number. And then I've got parent email address and parent phone number. I'll go ahead and map those, not parent first name. 
parent email, and parent phone number. Parent email, and you can have multiples. So if you got a divorce situation, you could have parent email one, parent email two, so on and so forth. Um, this parent email, parent phone number, those are the contact data points used in the comp profiles. So quite important to have. Once I've done this, I hit confirm. It'll move on to the next step where I can double check. Did I do everything right here? I had 10, 10 students in my data set. So you can see I've got first name, last name, teacher, group, identifier, email, and phone number. Perfect. Let's import. And we'll wait a moment here. It lines everything up and then we'll see this bar move shortly. The other uh, forms of QR tagging, um, there was regular QR tagging. That's where you want to use the QR cards, but aren't able to get the data set. That allows you to pr pr um, print generic QR cards or generate a file that you can put on a tablet um, so that you can photograph them, capture the, the student data on that card, do the data entry back at, at your studio. The other one was manual tagging. That is where you have a job, you didn't have the QR cards, but you need to sort them into those individual galleries. Uh, that's nice because when you up, if you've got all the images, you load them in, the first image of each subject, you say, okay, that's, that's the start of this kid, that's the start of this kid, that's the start of this kid. It's a nice um, visualized workflow in our system. You just click, 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 click. And now you've identified all of those, those students easily. Um, but those are the two scenarios if you don't have the data ahead of time, but they, they do work well. The other one in there, oh, also uh, is registration. Say you've got a school that isn't allowing you to, uh, isn't giving you those emails or phone numbers, um, but they would be willing to uh, send out an email on your behalf that would allow parents to register and they themselves give you their emails or phone numbers. So you can generate a registration job, have that link sent out. So all the parents pre-register and give you that data ahead of time. So you build a data set ahead of the shoot so that you can generate QR cards and capture all that data. A good workaround there as well, if you run into that situation. I'm gonna hit done here. And you'll now see, this is changed. You'll see I've got 10 names in there. I've got manage names. I can also generate extra access codes. That'll generate some generic access codes for me. You know, if you're doing a school shoot, there's always gonna be those kids that weren't in the data set, you know, they enrolled. So she was early in the school year, they're, they're enrolled late. Um, so it's always good to have those extras. So you can grab that card, photograph it, and then jot their, their details down. If I clicked manage names here, it'll bring me back to that list. And I can always manipulate um, if, if I've got a, if it's prior to the picture day and the school sends me a new list, I can manipulate this, right? You can see up here, I can delete the records, re-upload, change, change the function, change how this looks. But we have uploaded the data. The next step is QR cards. So I will click over to there. All right, QR cards. That drives our, drives, <laughs> everything we do with photography and matching in Got Photo. And we do have some other capture methods if you wanted to use uh, uh, fullographies in tagged and use metadata workflows, we support that as well. But our tried and true methodology is going optical with QR cards. What's fun is we've got multiple designs here. You can download some templates and customize them as well but our stock ones are great. I, I either use the half page kids with neutral, with half page kids and neutral, which is selected, or also minimal. Uh, minimal is great uh, for mini sessions, uh, portrait jobs. What I really like about our half pagers, the, excluding the mi minimal ones, they can also be marketing pieces. 
and I'll, I'll show you when I generate them. It's got all the login pieces. Well, when I'm ready to go, I hit generate. That's gonna start running. I'm gonna do the hot swap here. So we will say this is done. And what I am, what gets created is this PDF file ready to get cut and printed or printed and cut. And here's, and they, they show up on, they show up two up. So I get this nice marketing piece and what I was talking about there. You can utilize these QR cards as an additional marketing piece. So Kimberly Brooke comes up to my camera. I grab her, her card, take a photograph of it. So now I'm able to identify Kimberly Brooks. I can send this card home with her and you see it's got all of the information on there. The online shop, their access code. It even says the discount and when it's valid to. So it gives you that extra touch point, right? When you, when you transition away from prepay perhaps, um, it's great with proofing to have all those extra touch points, right? Here's, here's this one going home as a reminder. Hey, it was picture day. If the parent goes online before they've ordered, They'll get like they'll get a notice like, hey, you're here a little bit early. Love that you're here. Enter your contact information. You'll be notified as soon as it, as soon as the job is set set live. And then this just ties in if if you do have the emails and the phone numbers, just those extra touch points that drives that conversion rate that you're looking for. So I've got all these cards. Let's say as a analog millennial, I would print these out cut them, have them ready to go for picture day. Some of our photographers do though, if they're not sending them home, they'll take this file, put it on a tablet, such as an iPad. And when Kimberly Brooks walks up, they'll just swipe over to Kimberly Brooks, photograph the tablet. That way they don't have to print all this paper, do a little extra, extra paper handling. Um, you know, makes them that much more efficient. So that's totally a great way to work with these as well. So I'm going to jump over. This job is done. We're going to get rid of it. Boom. Okay. We're in our job. Just showed you those QR cards. Now I'm ready to go take pictures. So I go out to the job. I've got these cards. Right. I've got, these are not those cards but that works. Let's switch the transition back to all of me. So I'm at the picture day. Student walks up, grab their card, take a great picture. Now I can take all the pictures I want of that student. Next kid comes up. I photograph their card, take all the pictures I want. You get the idea. You work through it in a linear fashion. Everything's optically identified. And so that QR card, We'll replicate the data, all those images in our system, all the way through. But don't worry. If you make a mistake, we can solve for that. Our system, what I'll show you on the upload, you can drag and drop the QR cards around, reassign as needed. It happens. We're human. Sometimes you're like, ah, oh, crap, I didn't photograph that QR card, so I'll take a picture afterwards. You can just move it right in front of those kids' images. Or if kids are put together on the same QR card because you just flat out forgot, you can then say that first image, just like I talked in manual tagging, click it, you're good to go. So let me transition back. So I've gone out, had a great photo shoot at the school, back in the studio, I download the images. At this point, here's my folder of images. You can see I've got QR card. Somehow I'm a, a fantastic photographer. And a, as a traditional school photographer, I've nailed every single shot. I didn't screw up. That doesn't happen. You know, you'll, you'll have multiple images here. And especially if you're moving into more modern school pictures, you know, our system definitely can handle and it's almost recommended to doing those longer shoots where you've got five, seven images of each kid. And that really drives your average order value. But in this scenario, I wanted to keep it clean. I've got one QR card photographed, one image all lined up. At this point, 
what I can do. I can edit, right? If I do my own editing workflow or I send them out. You can also leverage editing within our system and I'll, I'll show that in a bit. But I clean everything up here. I've got my images renamed. Whatever you do, pre-load into the software. I'm, you get to that st step, now I'm ready to load. And so that's where you come to the photo management page. Here, you'll see the watermark. We've got a standard, but you can absolutely build your own. We recommend that. You, you can either use your logo, any of those type of, um, any type of way you want to do it, you choose how well it's tiled, how often it's tiled, what the opacity is. I'm going to choose the standard watermark though for simplicity. And then I will create an album. We'll just call it upload for now. You at least have to have one album. But what I am going to do is I'm going to sort the album um, by teacher. And I'll show that shortly. So for now, my album, I'm going to upload everything into a single album. I get that here. What you'll see here is a spot for the group image. If you have a group image and you, you can load it there and you can, that way you only have to upload the group image once and have it, it, it will display in the carts of all the individuals associated with that group image in the album. That's really, really nice, say for a spring picture day where you do groups and individuals, you have all your teacher albums and you can load the group image in. I am just doing individuals. So let's jump in there. I am going to select all my images, open. You'll see I should have 20. That looks good. I will click start upload. This should go relatively quick. Yes, it is. This is the web uploader I'm showing y'all. We have other methods as well. One I'm really excited about is our Lightroom integration. You can install that plugin in Lightroom. And as most photographers nowadays are Lightroom power users, you can do your editing in Lightroom once you're happy there. Open the plugin, click export, choose your job, right? Like this demonstration job. And you are, um, everything will start sending right over. That saves, again, back to efficiencies, saves you steps. Or if you're a photographer who does um, really large jobs, high schools, something like that. We also have a desktop applic application called Easy Upload. That allows you to multi-thread the uploads, move a lot of images quite quickly. So I'll let the thumbnails finish load. I'll jump over, spend this time talking price profiles. Important thing that you'll, uh, important feature that you'll want to get set up for your job. Uh, price profiles, you can link directly from the photo job. Um, if you see where you select the price profile for the job, to the right of that, it'll say edit price profile. You can click that and get over there. Um, here, I've gone to settings up in the top and then price profiles. Every job will need to have a price profile. Um, if you don't attach a price profile, the images will be viewable, but it will just be as a viewable gallery with no purchasing. You can build packages, offer a la carte, downloads. We're currently integrated with 22 different lab partners across the United States and Canada. So most likely your lab is partnered with us. So I'm going to click in. I've, I went ahead and pre-created. Pre-created? I pre-created. We'll say that's a word. Photo Academy demonstration. Let's jump in. And what you'll see in this page, you'll see I've got my packages section here. I went ahead and created a package A, B, and C. A couple of important things here. You'll see the selling net price. This is the price that you set. Um, and then to the right of that, you'll see what the production costs are. We've worked with the labs. Note that 
we don't collect the lab payment for you. That's a relationship you have with your lab partner, but we do have their prices in GotPhoto so you can see how much that package or product should cost to produce at the lab. But note that that is with an asterisk, those prices could be a little different. If you've got special pricing with them, that won't show up here. You'll see our service fee that we take, and then you'll see your total profit from what your selling price is. So if you're looking for a particular margin, just your selling net price accordingly. And as you'll scroll down here, you'll see that I'm offering download all photos. You can bundle that. Um, you can set, uh, you can download individual photos. And then there's some a la carte options I've added as well. And you'll see uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm using Richmond Lab. Um, it'll show you which lab is, um, you're using under each of those. You can use multiple labs, but note, it gets a little tricky if you use multiple labs in a price profile as a parent selects a product from one lab and another lab in the same checkout, they're gonna get charged for shipping twice. Something to keep in mind. Some cool features uh, that I'd love to point out here. Um, I'm using some upsell functionality um, on package B and C. It's a great way to drive that average order value um, where you know they select package B and then they say, hey, for an additional X amount of dollars, you can get all the downloads that you ordered with this package. You can have packages limited to a um, certain number of images. Recommended price is a great thing to set as well. So it shows that they're getting a discount. I'll just set that right now. You can also set the, um, what the images are available for. This is really helpful if you're using group images. Um, you know, if, if you don't want them to download the group, right, you want to have that sold separately, right? You can set these a la carte items to just be individuals. And if you photograph that group image for a particular dimension, say an eight by 10, four by five ratio, or you're doing more of a panoramic, you can set a product to only be available for the group image. That way you don't, just talk personal experience, I've, I've seen where a parent's gotten wallets of the group and it looks a little goofy. And they, they call and say, why did my, my group look weird? Well, see, kind of ordered eight wallets of the group image. What can you do? Well, you can do. You can set it up to where they can't do that. A lot of fun stuff. This job isn't green screen, but if it was, you can manage all your green screen backgrounds here. These are stock ones in, but you can load as many um, backgrounds in as you like. And you can have two tiers, a standard tier and a premium tier. What's fun about that just for the sake of the demonstration, show how the green screen works. If you're in a market, and some markets across uh, US and Canada can do this, you can upcharge for certain, certain backgrounds. Um, so you have that opportunity. The background swap out is real time. So you'll have PNGs in, in the shop instead of JPEGs. You can um, allow the parents in the shop to mix and match and play with the backgrounds, get excited and hopefully spend a little bit more money. So fully supported green screen workflows here. Delete those because it's not a green screen job. I'll jump over. Packages are built separately from price profiles. There's a tab over here on the left. And you'll see my package A, package B, and package C. And this is where I've built my package A. You can see I've limited to, like I can limit to a single pose. I can limit to a single background um, so that you can, right, you sort of build that package C might be not as exciting. So you want to use those restrictions to make them even slightly less exciting to move them up like, oh, well, if I order package, package B, I can get different backgrounds for all my prints. Because um, what you can do with Got Photo, you don't have to order just sheets and half sheets. You can order cut prints, which allows that um, a lot more 
flexibility and customize customization for the parent where each eight by 10 could be a different background, could be a different pose, each five by seven, four by five. And you'll see here with, just like we saw on the price profile within the package itself, I could set this eight by 10. Oh, that's the group for the eight by 10. And I can set the quantity and you see the pricing here as well. So that's a quick rundown of the price profiles. So much flexibility here, so many options for upsells. Um, I think you'll find a, a, a lot of utility here. Let's jump back over to the photo job. Let me refresh. It should be done. Yes, it is. So I, I've loaded the job with the web uploader, but if you came at it with uh, Lightroom, it would be here as well, also with easy upload. And you'll see, here's the the pre um, the, the pre stage. Right? These images aren't assigned to to their specific specific QR card um, or access code as the system terms. Those are interchangeable. If it's a physical print, right? It, it's the QR card in our system. It's the access code, but this QR card is the access code. So you'll see that terminology. Something to keep in mind. It's really the same thing. All right, here we go. You'll see it's already pre-identified those photographs of the QR card. And you'll see a little green icon. That's the access code. If for some reason I it didn't it didn't pick up the barcode, say that it was shot light shot funny, the lighting was bad, the, the kid was holding it and they bent it weird at the right at the time you took the picture and didn't realize it. You can always add access code and assign, say, oh no, that, that is an access code. Please use it as an access code. And if you need to rearrange, as I mentioned, it's just a drag and drop. Get back in there. But I shot flawlessly, as I mentioned, because I'm an amazing photographer. I'm really not. So I will, once I'm happy here, everything looks good, I'm gonna click activate. And as I mentioned, hey, I, I just created that single upload album. I'm wanting to have them divided into albums, into albums based on, on the names list. So you can have it do teacher, you can have it do group, you can have it do group and teacher if there's data missing in there. I'm gonna do teacher and I'm gonna click activate and you'll see the result of that shortly. Just, just as with the names list, we've got a activation process. The blue bar will get to the finish line. If you're doing a very large job, say a thousand kid high school, this could take a little while but you'll see here in the yellow, this gallery is currently being processed. You will be notified by email once the processing is complete. So you can go away from this page and be rest assured that our system will send you, send, our system emails will send out and you'll get notified. So you don't have to sit here and stare at it like we're doing and I'm trying to stretch. Just stretching, just stretching. Oh, you're at oh, 95%, come on. I need the Jeopardy music. Nope, nope. Ah, come on. Now it's awkward. Awkward pause. I'm about to go show them something else. You're killing me, Smalls. Good movie, Sandlot. Should I jump over and talk com profiles? Yeah, let's go talk com profiles. Communication profiles. All right. 
We make it easy with communication profiles. We pr have pre-built a good number of price profiles for a lot of different situations that you're presented with. There's a lot of great ones in there that have nine, 10 emails, also include in there additional SMS touch points. Not as many as email. We know that you don't want to bombard someone with SMS because it's a bit more personal when people's cell phones. Um, but they're really good touch points, especially when the job is launching, when the coupon is expiring. You can also build all of your own, which is really exciting. And if you've got some great HTML templates, you can copy them over. But I'm for just like with the price profile, you can click off to the side and edit the one you attached. I think I used generic got photo for two week coupon. I'll click in here and you'll see everything laid out, when it's gonna go out and who it's going to go to. So if you look, you've got the type where it's either email or SMS. You've got info, when it's gonna be delivered. Uh, what the, well, before above that is what, what's the trigger, when it's gonna be delivered and what the subject line is. Over to the side, you'll see if it's send to potential buyers and send to buyers. Potential buyers are any customer that was loaded in associated with the job that has an email or phone number that we, that we can communicate to. They become a buyer once there's an order associated with their customer information. And customers are associated with, with the subjects, which are the kids. So you've got the kid and then a subject created from that email and uh, phone number. And then that, what's great about our system up here in the top, you'll see the customers. That customer can be associated with multiple subjects and year over year. So you've got that sort of CRM data in our system. Hey, here's all the orders associated with that email address and phone number. You'll see though, the long winded tangent I just went on there. Potential buyers we're always communicating to we're less so bombarding the buyers, right? We, we want to approach and market to the parents or subjects to get them to convert. Once they convert, we don't want to keep communicating to them because then they're like, ah, I'm getting overwhelmed. They get annoyed and they unsubscribe. We don't want that. We want them to buy and then we kick them out of the communication now, there's a couple of touch points in here, right? If, just a friendly, if they early order early, right, that, that that coupon's about to expire. So we do touch them, um, send them one extra touch point in there. But if you scroll down, you'll see, hey, when, the, when you set that job to selling, sends an email and SMS, then when, then it starts picking up those touch, um, those uh, call to action points around the coupon deadline. So seven days before email goes out, three days before an email goes out. The day it's expiring, an SMS and email go out. Just one last chance. Hey, your, your photo voucher is expiring. Then we take a breather, depending on how long it, it's from selling to final deadline. But then we send additional emails. Hey, the archive deadline, seven days out. Archive deadline, three days out. And finally... Job's getting archived today. This is your very last chance to order, and that email goes out. So all in all, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine emails, seven emails, two SMS associated um, with this. And all you had to do was drop down, select it, and hit save. You don't have to schedule any of this. System handles it all. In, and we have nice pre-built um, HTML templates, right? This one's pulling in um, buyer information. It's pulling in small proofs of images from the gallery. You've got a see photos now button. This, they click that, it's a link directly into their cart. They don't even have to enter um, their unique password. And as I mentioned, all of these are fully customizable. So if you've got, if you're comfortable with HTML, you can build it and, and make really fancy emails. 
and customize the SMS as well. All right, so we covered COM profiles. Let's jump back over. Perfect. We are done. So as you'll see, we started with the upload album. We now have Teacher Moore and Teacher Scoggin. And upload should be empty. Yes, it is. We don't need this album anymore. I deactivated it. You can also delete it. I can do that as well. Bye, album. All right. So my 10 students are now sorted by teacher into each of their albums. So I click into Miss Moore's class here. You will now see each student is identified and sorted accordingly. I've got Earl with his image associated with his access code, which is also their unique password. So if they go to the shop, enter that code, that will take them in. Move this out of the way. So you got Jacob there, got Roger, got Matt, and I've got Elizabeth. So they all reside in this album, but Earl's parents, Jacob's parents, they don't see, they only see their kid when they log in with their unique access code. So it's secure, safe, private, which we love. Everything looks great. Then I can jump out, go into Scoggins class, and you'll see there's Kimberly, Anne, Harold, Catherine, Charles. And so if I had a group image for Mr. Scoggins class here, I could upload it. And then when they go into their shop, you know, Kimberly's parents would see her individual and also that class group. All right. One thing to touch on before I set the job to selling, I had mentioned early on, if you're doing editing outside the system, great. We also offer photo editing, um, which makes it quite easy because you can upload everything in. Our system handles it, puts it all in place for you. You don't have to mess with any of it. So you can, if you're a green screen photographer, you can load the, the green JPEGs in, um, set, the, configure the job, activate the access codes, and then send the green screens out for knockout. They go out, they come back in, put back in place. Also, if you need to do culling, cropping, any photo enhancement, you can do that as well with our system. What's exciting, what, what, what's exciting, what I like about it is you, you can put all the reference photos in so the technicians know exactly what the look is you're going for. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of photographers like to do their own editing, but when you're looking to build your brand, you're looking to scale, it's... It's complicated to scale editing, right? When you can outsource it, that allows you to focus on what you need to be doing, which is taking pictures and booking more business. So let's jump back to the main page, the settings page of this job called Volume Photo Academy Demonstration. And so we've managed the names, we've printed the QR cards, we've done the photo shoot, we've loaded the images, I've touched on the price profile. I've got it set. I've got my Photo Academy demonstration with my three packages, A, B, and C, ready to go. I've got my coupon here. Got a 25% discount through the 12th of March. I'm not doing batch shipping. And then I've got an archiving date set at the end of March on the 31st. I'm using that communication profile I walked, walked through that was pre-built, my generic got photo. Uh, with the two-week coupon. So that can all trigger around around this deadline date and then additionally around this deadline date. I should be good. Now, let's set the job to selling. I can jump right over here to the top right. You'll see 
switch job to selling. It's gonna, I'm gonna get confirmation pop up. There's gonna be 10 access codes. It's also gonna tell me that there's potential buyers. Uh, this is great, just double check, right? If you loading in emails and phone numbers and you saw 10 access codes are available, but zero potential buyers. Oh, red flag. I did something wrong in the, the data upload. So you can go back, resolve that. But here I've got matching. I've got 10, 10 students, 10 potential buyers. That's the data I loaded. Gonna click confirm. And a little underwhelming, but this job is set to selling. Exciting stuff happening in the background. Price profile, not price profile. This is the communication profile. The communication profile is now queuing up. Those 10 potential buyers, they're going to get that first wave of emails, letting them know the job is ready. And those 10 SMS to let them know that their gallery is ready to view and they can go place their orders. At this point, you're done, right? You don't have to promote the job. The platform is promoting the job for you, right? And as I mentioned, I made the joke earlier. It's very true. You get to kick back and move on to the next job. Got um, the next photo shoot to go on. This is going to market for you for the next five weeks and drive, um, drive conversion, drive average order value, and you don't have to go, you don't have to have all that busy work trying to, hey, get those orders in, in another system, typing up, you know, writing emails, scheduling emails. It's just a single drop down. And so once the job's rolling, I've got my statistics, got my statistics tab. That's a tough word for me to say today. Here's where you can track those orders coming in. This bar graph will just start going up. You'll get logins, you'll get orders. And what you're working towards is you know, 10 access codes, 10 orders. You'll see the sales, right? Total sales, the, the payments taken out over here as well. All the data is tracked right here. A couple little fun things before I wrap up by showing you the actual shop. If you needed to um, needed a physical piece uh, to send to the school, you can use our contact sheet generator. It generates a, uh, it's basically a, a tiny proof sheet with relevant information on how to log in. Like just like you use the QR card as a touch point, you can use our contact sheets as a touch point. Doesn't cost anything extra. You can also use our newsletter system, which is just like a communication profile, but is, a one-off. So say, you know, come May, right, for this job, you want to, you know, there's, say, a 50% buy rate. Hopefully you have 100% buy rate, but just bear with me on the example, right? Hey, end of year promotion, you unarchive the job, attach a discount to it, spool up a single newsletter, right? It's using all the same email functionality as a comm profile and SMS. And you can send out that that one-off promotion, right? Newsletters are a great way um, to do those one-off promotions, right? Holiday promotions, they're just a notification to your client base. Right? As you build a client base in Got Photo, you can tap into that to promote your studio work. So you do many sessions in the holidays. A um, lot of opportunity there. And then also in the selling page, you've got the student data exports. So if you need to do a PSPA for a yearbook, you need to do an administrative export for a school that is using uh, eSchools or Skyward, you know, you name it, you can generate it there with the student data export. All right, last thing to show y'all before I end this recording, let's jump over to the shop. So as I mentioned, parent gets that email they click the link in the email, that's gonna drop them right past this page. They're not even gonna to have to deal with this page. That's two extra, two less clicks they have to do. But I'm going to enter, I had copied an access code of one of the students earlier. Earlier, I'm gonna click open album. Do not wanna save my password, Google. This is where I get dropped into as a parent. You'll see a couple 
really cool things here. The discount expiration code. Got that call to action up there. Hey, that, that counts down, right? You got that little timer, drives that urgency. Down here as well, you'll see in, in, in a bigger form that coupon code expiring on the 12th, it's 25%. And as I mentioned, to make it easy on the parent and to have everyone feel good about it, it's already applied. You'll see, I've got the order photos button. You'll know what code's entered. See a little thumb there. Um, great functionality of our shop. If they're siblings, parents can enter in all their codes at the same time. It makes ordering that much easier. And if you want to gate on that, you can gate packages to individual access codes. I know some photographers want to make sure that parents aren't combining everything into one package. So you can um, gate for that. But I've got one student, so I'm going to order some photos. So I see a large thumbnail here. Um, got digital downloads I could buy if I wanted to just do the download all. But I want to buy this photo. And you'll see the a la carte options. I've got prints. I've got gifts, right? I've got, I got buttons set up here. I can buy a mug. That's what I'm going to do. I want to buy a mug. If there's multiple sizes, right, all of them tiered together to make it simple for the parent, right, the different sized prints, right? They can buy an 8x10. They can buy a 10x13 here. But I want to buy an 8x10, 15-ounce uh, mug. I've added to the cart. I can continue shopping, but I want to go ahead to the cart. Parents get the ability to crop. We've got all the crop dimensions loaded in. And so they can position it. Whoop. We've got this really get reminder if you're, if you're concerned right? It, it protects them from doing something like I just did, right? Hey, this resolution is low. I'll crop my photo, click save image. See that there. And then I can proceed to checkout. Discount codes already applied. The lab shipping for the items already applied. So that way you as the photographer um, aren't covering the cost of shipping directly to it. We like this is the shipping that you're going to get charged from the lab, which is great. You can absolutely run if you go back and look at the the discount. You can absolutely run a particular promotion where you cover the shipping cost. So that's a great way to incentivize conversion, where you say, "Hey, for a week, shipping's free. It's on me." And when you're doing batching. Right? That's a great way to also offer free shipping where you aggregate all the orders for to a certain day and then all those orders go to the lab at one time and are shipped together to either you or the organization. The last thing I want to show is the package. Let's go order a package. I want to see my package deals. Great display here. I can see I've got, if I just want to do download all photos, I've got package C, B, and A. As I mentioned, hey, there's that, that retail price versus the discounted price, so they can see that they're getting a discount. They get told how many products are in there, so they can write that drives. Like, oh, well, if I spend 10 more dollars and get package B, I get eight versus four. And if I scroll down, you've got this great visualizer to see, to show the number of prints they're getting. You'll see package C, get the two four by fives, the one five by seven, and the one sheet of wallets. Package B gets bigger, and then package A, I get lots of stuff. I got eight four by fives, four five by sevens, two eight by tens, 16 wallets, and then package A includes one download. And then if I click choose photos, in this scenario, I only have one image granted, but if you had multiple, this is where they could mix and match. And if you only wanted them to order a package from one image, I showed you that in setup, you could absolutely do that. But this allows them to say, oh, okay, well for, 
for this 4x5, I want this picture. Works really great with backgrounds. Um, that gets gets parents quite quite excited. But I will add this to the cart. Item successfully added to the cart. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's back to packages. That optional download over here, right? You've got that that call to action around that upsell of, hey, just for 15 more dollars, you can get all the images ordered here. Just a great upsell piece. I love that. So my cart is done. And you can see here for the packages, they can crop for each product in there. And at that point, they are ready to check out. As I mentioned, total photo products, the discount, the shipping, the sales tax set up to where um, you know you set it to the state that you're from. I think I have Texas in here right now. Um, and then the total received to checkouts, super easy. They have to say, hey, I did adjust the crop. I approve this. And then as in most carts, you can go through, they enter their information, enter their credit card information, order comes in, I'm back in administration area, order will drop in on this tab, and you can just watch the orders roll through. If you are having them set to direct fulfillment, you'll see over here, last status. Here, this order is a a digital download only, but you will also see, hey, sent to lab, sent to Richmond, sent to H&H, &H, sent to Millers. Again, it's all optimized, so you don't have to do the, the busy work. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Matt. I hope this was helpful.